Chapter 51 Nicholas Tries the Wolfsbane Potion You are listening at NovelFull.audio The wedding was another chapter in Sophie and Nicholas lives together and they spent the next few days together as a happily married couple. Even though they had already consummated before their wedding, their first night as husband and wife was also special. Their hearts opened up further to one another. It was at that time that Nicholas finally decided to continue with the Wolfsbane cure and explained what it meant to rid himself of lycanthropy. The two of them discussed it over their meal together. Wait, you have to suffer throughout the entire process. Sophie's eyes widened once she told him. She grabbed his hand and shook her head. I don't want to see you suffer, Nick and I don't want you to die either. Nicholas gave her a reassuring smile and he patted the back of her hand. I'll be all right, especially because I know that I will have you by my side. The reason for my life is sitting right in front of me. I'm serious, Nick. Wolfsbane is lethal to even humans. How much more when you're a leakin? Sophie frowned at him. Don't worry about me, honey. I want to go back to my family and present you properly as the woman who saved my life and also opened up my heart. Nicholas told her. I can only do that when I am no longer affected by this condition. But, can't they accept what happened to you? Sophie looked at him. This isn't your fault, so why do you have to suffer for it? Nicholas smiled sadly. It happens to all of us, Sophie. Even though you have no fault towards your aunt and her family, still, they mistreated you. You can think of it like that. Sophie didn't want to imagine how terrible Nicholas' parents were. The young man already explained it before when he was beating himself up for what happened to Sophie, but her husband still sought his parents' approval. Okay, I will do my best to help you, Nick. Sophie looked him in the eye. As your wife, I will do everything that I can to alleviate your pain. What if there's a helpful pain reliever in your almanac? I will research. Later that day, Nicholas and Sophie would start testing out the wolfsbane. All of the gathered wolfsbanes was made into a brewing potion that even though Sophie's eyes watered as she prepared it, she continued until it was a sickening purple hue. I think it's ready, Sophie finally said and poured all of its content into a bottle for Nicholas to drink. She gingerly placed it on the table because even inhaling the fumes was enough to make her feel incredibly sick. Nicholas prepared himself a chair and also bought some thick ropes from Haunting Inn Village. Some of the men were curious and asked him why he needed secure bindings, and Nicholas briefly told them that it was a trap. The young man sat down in a chair and then tied his legs together to the legs of the chair and also added in some stones to give it more weight. Even though it was painful to do this, Sophie helped tie Nicholas' arms to a chair even though she was completely against it. Is it not too late to back out? Sophie whispered. For once her lips were pale and she looked incredibly afraid of what they were about to do. Nicholas offered her a weak grin. I don't want to suddenly thrash around in pain and accidentally hurt you. Can you put the bottle in between my lips? He was afraid that Sophie would draw it back once she saw that he was in pain. It was much better that he did it himself. Hesitantly, Sophie listened to Nicholas and placed the bottle as he asked. The purple liquid sloshed and though it hit and made his lips literally burn and singe but without another moment's hesitation, Nicholas drank it down. A haunting scream of pain and howling echoed against the Blackwood Forest. It was only the fact that they were in the woods that prevented the villagers from hearing it. Or perhaps even if they had heard it, refused to rush into the forest to see what happened. When Nicholas finally woke up, he was experiencing cold sweats and he was lying down in the bed and no longer tied to a chair. Sophie's head was resting against his hand, but he could feel the damp tears on them. He gently pulled his hand away and looked at her. Did she cry herself to sleep while taking care of him? Sophie must have carried him here when he passed out from the intensity of the wolfsbane. Oh, Sophie. Nicholas' heart ached at the sight of his wife pushing herself to this and yet those strong feelings that seized him would transform him back into his wolf form and nearly tear out his clothes. Before he could ruin his clothes, Nicholas forced himself and switched back quickly into his human form. 
he clenched his fist and cursed underneath his breath. However, it was finally at this moment that Sophie raised her head and saw him awake. She suddenly threw herself in his arms and let out a choked sound. Oh, Nick. Nicholas could hear the wobble in her voice. Nick, I thought I'd never see you again. Guilt came over his expression as he gently patted her back. Nicholas closed his eyes in pain. I'm incredibly sorry. I shouldn't have made you worry like this. Please tell me that it worked. Sophie's shoulders shook. I don't want to ever see you go through that again, Nick. Please, that much pain should have cured you. Nicholas' own problems brought his wife so much trouble. How could Nicholas give her a scare like this? Sophie was someone who lost her parents and he knew that she would feel incredibly saddened if he were to disappear from her life as well. Nicholas made a decision to cure himself alone. He didn't want Sophie to suffer. I'm okay now, Nicholas whispered. Dot underscore 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 oh no. It looks like this Wolfsbane potion is bad for Nick, but he would keep forcing himself to take it, so he could get rid of his lycanthropy. Crying Face Chapter 52 Leland You are listening at NovelFull.audio Elsewhere, the two werewolves that Sophie encountered traveled far from haunting him by transforming into wolves and reunited with their Alpha and Pack who were waiting for their reports. As scouts, it was up to them to serve as the information gatherer for the Pack. They went to their headquarters around two days away from Hauntingen. It was a mansion located on the top of the hill and surrounded by thorny plants. The property looked grey and cold and gave off the vibe of being haunted. The pack liked it that way because it kept people off. The villagers down the valley thought the mansion was owned by an old and wicked witch who could turn them all into animals if they bothered her. So, they always tried to avoid going around the area. When the two scouts entered the big hall in the middle of the mansion, they could see their leader standing by the window. His back facing them. If they didn't know him in person, they might even think he was a statue from how his body was stiff and didn't make any movement. His white long hair went down to his shoulders, only added to the coldness he exuded. It actually reminded people of an ice statue. The man was tall and burly. Everything about him screamed power and strength. His muscles protruded from under his black shirt and his gesture looked overbearing. Even though it was a cold night in autumn, he didn't seem bothered by the low temperature and didn't feel the need to wear a coat, unlike his people. The two grey werewolves transformed back into their human forms. Alpha. Duncan and his companion panted as they fell to their knees and bent to the silent man. We have the news. The white dot haired man didn't bother to turn around to acknowledge their presence. However, they could hear his authoritative voice speak calmly. Speak. Most of the humans are easily deceived and cannot detect that we're werewolves, the first man said. However, we encountered someone who realized what we were when we inquired of the people who lived in the Blackwoods. The village elder of Haunting and knew that we were werewolves. Duncan burst. An icy silence from their alpha had Duncan clearing his throat and bowing his head in apology along with his companion. They did not want to gather the wrath of their leader and cause any trouble within the pack. Alpha, we also have another news Anne. Duncan swallowed. I think you will like this one. What of it? Leland's voice was cold and blunt. Duncan hesitated along with his companion. We met the woman that you have been looking for based on her descriptions, but she did not seem to have any clue to her roots. We have also noticed the scent of another alpha werewolf on her. I am unsure which pack, what did you say? Finally, the pack members could see an expression from their leader because the man suddenly turned around and looked at the two scouts with narrowed eyes. He had always been handsome, but he never smiled and he never looked happy. But today they suddenly saw a very faint smile on his lips and that made him look so charming. The pack members were dumbfounded. Not only that faint smile, they also couldn't recognize the glint in his eyes. 
What was that? Joy. Relief. It looked a bit like happiness. He was in a very good mood, all of a sudden. For as long as they knew their alpha, he had never shown any expressions such as happiness or joy. He was always so cold and unexpressive. They could never tell what he had in his mind. Seeing his blue dot green eyes was like seeing the depths of the ocean. Nobody knew how deep it was and what was stored underneath. Alpha, the woman you have been looking for, I heard you during the first time. Leland's eyes flashed as Duncan and the rest of the werewolves cowered. They were worried that they had angered their alpha. He went to haunting in two years ago to look for a woman but couldn't find her. Then he told everyone to find her. They had not been successful for two years. Yet suddenly, Duncan and Max got lucky. They actually bumped into her in the market in downtown haunting him. But, was their alpha still looking for her? Was this information no longer useful for him? Tell me more about the other alpha. Leland looked at Duncan with narrowed eyes. Did you see him? We really don't know a thing about the other werewolf sent, Duncan explained apologetically. For all we know, it could also be a rouge. Everyone in the pack was aware of who once lived in the forests of Blackwoods. The alpha balled his fists to his sides and turned around again. He looked at the full moon in the night sky and took a deep breath. He must confirm this report himself. If Sophie had really returned to Hauntingen, he had to see her immediately. The man waved one hand and motioned the scouts to go. The two of you are currently dismissed. After Duncan and Max left, Leland made up his mind to check this report by himself. He turned around and walked through the dozens of his pack members. They were all members with the highest ranks who were allowed to see him and join the clan meetings where they actually could contribute to what their packs want to do. Their pack was the leading pack of all the werewolves in the entire continent. They had the most members and right now, they were planning something big that would involve other packs too. They were getting ready to declare war on the royal family. This kingdom was their biggest enemy and the king had slaughtered so many of their clan's members during the last great war. Where are you going, Alpha? A tall and older werewolf walked to Leland's side and touched his arm. We still need to discuss our plan. I have something to check first, Leland replied flatly. You can go ahead and have the talk without me. Alpha, you shouldn't forget the reason why we are here. The older werewolf looked at Leland with a frown. Please prioritize the pack's interest before you try to pursue that woman. You are to impersonate the late Count Romanov and draw closer to the royal palace. Leland narrowed his gaze at the older man. The clan elder that was sent to travel him by his mother was nothing more than a spy, but if he were to prove himself unruly, they would try to take his position as Alpha away from him. A member of the pack does not raise his voice against the Alpha. Leland smiled coldly and looked down at the older man. And that includes the elders meant to assist and advise me of my tasks. Know your place, elder, or I'll feed you to the birds. Why you? The elder's face reddened in anger and he blubbered angrily at the younger man. He jabbed a finger at the younger man. Just because you are here doesn't mean that you can get away, I already have, elder. Leland caught the older man's slim fingers in between his own and applied pressure to it. I'm the Alpha, aren't I? If you have any problems then challenge me to the death for the position of the Alpha. Only when you succeed could you consider ordering me around. The pain inflicted on the Elder's finger was enough to pulverize his very bone to dust and yet the Elder refused to show his pain and only withstood the act. Dot. The Elder gritted his teeth and bit his tongue until it bled blood. Well. Leland raised a brow. I pledge my allegiance to the Alpha, the Elder bowed and then cowardly slinked back to his carriage while cradling his hand. In his wolf form, the Elder would have retreated with his tail behind its body at being shamed at this moment. Leland didn't care at all. I will head to Hauntingen to deal with Duncan's report myself, Leland told his men. Send scouts ahead and deal with the situation in the upcoming towns and villages. 
Our next destination is Hastings and Lord Ferdinand's castle. Yes, Alpha. His men replied in unison. Without wasting another moment, Leland transformed into his wolf form. A majestic and white fur wolf appeared in front of his pack members before he quickly bounded off to haunting it again. Underscore 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 yes. Finally, Leland appears. Chapter 53 The Angry Alpha You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Leland found himself at Haunting Inn at last after a day of non stop travel. Compared to his pack members, he was able to get here faster than them. In addition to him being faster and stronger, he also pushed himself to the limit. After the arduous travel, every muscle in his body grew a bit weary. What took about a week of journey via a carriage and horses were finished by Leland in just a day and even as a Lycan and an Alpha, he paid dearly for it. However, he didn't stop moving at all. He really wanted to see her. It's been such an awfully long time. As he saw the familiar sight of Blackwood's forest, a feeling of nostalgia engulfed him. His tribesmen thought he was a cold and unhappy man. That was not entirely true. He was happy once. The years he spent with the Hansleys were the happiest time of his life. Perhaps, the only one. Strength coursed through his limbs and he started making plans. How would he separate the rogue Alpha from Sophie? A challenge to the death perhaps. Leland wasn't above assassination if it made his job easier. Anything to rid Sophie of that rogue. The Alpha passed by his old cave that he used when he left the Hansley's home and somehow, even there he could find the scent of both Sophie and this rogue wolf. His blood boiled as he rushed back to her hut. Leland wished that he didn't come here at this time. When he arrived, he saw Nicholas walk with Sophie from the forest with baskets in their hands, filled with berries and vegetables. Leland immediately recognized Sophie from her unique hair and how much she looked a lot like her mother. Gosh, she was so beautiful now that she was a grown woman. For a moment, Leland stood in awe. Nick, I can carry this, Sophie tried to steal one of the baskets filled with berries and vegetables from her husband. Please let me help you. I can also manage, you know. Nonsense, let me do it, Nicholas told her with a chuckle. I can handle all of these on my own. You're so grubby from harvesting the crops and there are even leaves in your hair plus some dirt on your cheek. I'm amazed. Sophie threw him a dirty look and snorted. She snatched one of the baskets from him and then bumped her hip against him. What? Do you think I look terrible? Do you regret marrying me instead of marrying a beautiful and gentle noble lady? Nicholas looked down at Sophie and kissed her lips and then drew back to give her a winsome grin. Not at all. Have I ever told you that leaves in your hair make you look so alluring? Huh, and does the dirt on my face turn you on? Sophie joked but her face was a little red. Nicholas' lips twitched into a smirk. And what if I tell you, yes? Sophie gave him a look. You're an absolute pervert. You're lucky I love this side of you too. And I love you too. Nicholas grinned uncontrollably. Wifey. Being married was awesome, he thought. He loved this woman very much and every day he spent with her was better than before. He couldn't wait to reveal his true identity and bring her to the capital to meet his family. Nicholas remembered Sophie had never seen big cities before. Her whole life revolved around haunting in and Hastings only. He knew she would love the capital from the way she told him about her cousins' trip there where they left her behind. Well. Sophie, just you wait. I will show the world to you. That is a promise. Sophie batted her eyes at Nicholas' love confession. Saying, I love yous had become so natural for them now. She poked his chiseled chest with one finger and said playfully. I love you more. Nicholas shook his head and smiled more broadly. He caught her finger and pulled her closer to him, and whispered with a husky voice, No. I love you more. 
Sophie giggled and escaped from his arms, to enter their hut. Nicholas quickly chased her playfully. Leland caught the sight of Sophie and Nicholas entering the hut. There was a look of love and also a hint of lust in both of their faces and, before Leland knew it, the door quickly shut behind them. Thud. Leland didn't even need to use his imagination to guess what was happening inside the modest hut. With his superior hearing, the sound of the baskets dropping followed by the sound of kisses and soft moans came rang in his ears like a loud bell. The sound of rustling of clothes and them being thrown into the floor was also detected by him. Sophie let out a squeal of delight and there were some loud footsteps. Perhaps she was being chased into the bed but she didn't sound unhappy at all. Leland was rooted to the spot, like an ice statue, and his blood suddenly ran cold. He just realized that he was too late. Far too late. One of his eyes twitched and then he closed both of them. After the journey he had taken and everything he went through just to see Sophie again, Leland still failed to accomplish the thing that he wanted. The Alpha clenched his fist and threw a punch into the nearest tree. Graph. Even in his human form, he delivered a devastating blow. A loud crack erupted like thunder blasting. The tree trunk split and finally crashed down into the ground beside the hut. It did nothing to soothe the Alpha's wrath and yet he knew that it gave away his position. A loud huff escaped his lips and he threw one last look at the hut and the sound of alarm coming from the inside. Underscore 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 What do you think about this chapter? By the way, this book will be locked starting from the next chapter. I hope you would keep supporting me and this book by unlocking the premium chapters with your coins. Since this book is written to join the werewolf contest, I really want to win. The book's performance will be taken into consideration for the winning criteria. So, if you wish to support Nick, Sophie, and Leland, you could fill this book with your comments, write reviews, unlock the premium chapters with coins, and vote with your power stones and golden tickets. For December, I aim to reach the top 10 golden ticket ranking. If you could support this book with your golden tickets and it reaches the top 10 ranking target, I will throw in 10 chapters mass release on January 1st. If it can get to the top 5 golden ranking, I will throw in 20 chapters mass release. I doubt this can happen, but feel free to surprise me, happy face. Chapter 54 Leland's Plan You are listening at NovelFull.audio When Leland heard from Duncan that Sophie had returned to haunting him, he had hoped that he could return and take her as his mate. However, apparently, someone else already captured her heart. That man called Sophie Wifey. She was also wearing a wedding ring on her finger. And, from their mixed sense, Leland could tell they had consummated their marriage. She had found her mate, and it was not Leland. Anger was slowly rising in his icy heart. He wanted to kill the other man and snatched Sophie away from him. If Leland wanted to, he could tear the guy's heart out regardless of him being a werewolf or not. However, the crystal clear expression of contentment in Sophie's face made him hold back. Leland took a deep breath to calm down his raging heart. Without another word, the Alpha turned away and sped off. Sophie shared a look of hesitation with Nicholas. She pulled the blankets across her body but she was already eyeing her clothes. Whatever made that sound was far from an animal. She whispered worried, Nick, can you stay here with me, please? Honey, I have to go out, Nicholas told her gently as he picked up his clothes and changed. There was a grim look on his face, but without another word, he looked out and saw the decimated tree. A stump was left on the ground while the rest of its body had now fallen across the area close to the hut. Nicholas's gaze saw the hint of force applied on the tree trunk and felt his blood grow cold. That was no ordinary fall. All it took was one sniff in the air and Nicholas realized that it was a werewolf. His eyes widened and panic seized his chest and he looked back to see his wife completely safe in bed. There were no leaking assassins or monsters that were about to seize Sophie away from him. 
no alpha monster was about to tear him away from his loved ones or remind him of what he experienced. This was not Nicholas' nightmares, but this was his reality and it was up to him to keep Sophie safe. Nicholas approached his wife and quickly pulled her to her feet. We need to go right now. What? Why? Sophie asked. There was an alarm in her voice, but she was reluctant to leave her home. Do you see those marks on the tree? Nicholas asked her, but he was already packing up her things and giving her a look. Actually, forget about that, and let's just go now to haunting him. Sophie looked at Nicholas' grim expression and nodded. Okay. Leland eventually returned to the mansion with a blank expression on his face. His men immediately started to greet him but they hesitated when they saw that he looked far more unhappy. The pack started silently questioning themselves and shared nervous looks. What happened when their alpha went to haunting him? Some of the braver ones or knew the reason why Leland went there drew closer. Alpha. Leland's gaze narrowed at them. What is it? Duncan gulped and looked at Max for help, but eventually motioned to himself. Alpha, is there anything we can do for you? You look a bit more upset than usual. Was the mission to haunting in a failure, Max slapped Duncan in the head before he said anything else and instead bowed his head lowly to avoid incurring their leader's wrath. Then, he spoke in a low voice, we are waiting for new orders, Alpha. Leland walked past the two of them. Don't bother with the rogue Leakin in haunting in and the woman. I have finally accomplished what I wanted. Let's just proceed with our mission. Give me updates and reports in Hastings later. Yes, Alpha. His men chorused but all of them were glancing at each other in confusion. Most of the time, a rogue Leakin was someone who was exiled from a pack due to crimes to their pack. It wasn't strange for an Alpha or a pack to kill a stray Leakin that wandered alone. So, why didn't Leland kill the Rouge, and instead ask them not to bother him and that woman? They really couldn't understand their Alpha. His mind was hard to guess and even though they had followed him for many years now, they didn't really know him. Before the rest of the pack could say anything else, Leland was already gone and stepped into his chamber's balcony area to settle with his thoughts silently. The crisp and refreshing morning air blew past the Alpha and yet it failed to ease or calm his features. His expression darkened at the glimpse of sunlight. Even the morning's rays felt like a nuisance more than anything to be soothed with. The reason why I headed there was to protect Sophie by making her my mate, Leland muttered to himself. When he arrived there, Leland found out Sophie was already happy and he was not needed any longer. He realized that he ended up not checking which pack Sophie's husband came from, but either way, even if he was a rogue. It didn't matter. Their situation honestly reminded Leland of Sophie's parents. Remembering Jack and and Hansley filled him with a certain amount of grief at the fact that they were already gone. I am sure that she will be well, Leland told himself to quiet down the thoughts that he had in mind. All of these thoughts of his were telling him to head back there and rightfully take back his place at Sophie's side. Before this other man came into the picture, Leland was already there. However, who was the person that Sophie loved? That it clearly wasn't Leland and even though he felt like he missed the chance and opportunity to win the woman's heart, he refused to give in to his primal instincts. There is no way that she'd be able to love someone like me, Leland muttered and then raked his fingers through his white hair in irritation and complete frustration. There was a dullness in his chest that he refused to acknowledge. All that was left for Leland to do right now was dedicate his time and energy to his position as Alpha. He'd pour his entire self into avenging Sophie's parents and all of the Lycans from the last great war. And yet a bitter smile still played on his lips. Was this what my father felt before? Leland whispered to himself. He could vividly remember his father's brutality and rage, the way that the entire council and elders in their pack could do nothing but tremble before him. Alpha Leon's tactics were preferring fear and respect over love and admiration from his pack. Leland thought that was simply his father's chosen path but as he grew older, learned more context in the past, now he realized how destructive love could be. 
It could eat someone's heart out and leave them as a shadow of their former selves. Leland strived to overcome that weakness. Instead of being wrathful like the previous Alpha, who was also his father, Leland was determined to support Sophie in the shadows. Leland said that to himself, but he couldn't bear to take another step that would lead him back to haunting him. When Leland closed his eyes, all he could see was her. He had done his best to imagine what a grown dot up Sophie would look like when he was still growing his power but his memory failed to fully capture how stunning she grew up to be. Sophie was even more beautiful than he could even fathom and, though he was more nostalgic as to how she treated him when they were children, Leland found himself mesmerized. Sophia Hansley had the faintest scent of something intoxicating to Leland. Being born from only one Leakin parent, Sophie's scent was incredibly subtle and the rogue Leakin scent was almost insufferably overpowering at that time. Leland felt like he was smelling a wet dog. However, he held on to the subtle fragrance in his mind's memory until the very moment that someone strode into his chambers without permission. Leland's gaze snapped at the intruder. It was his mother's spy. The Leakin elder didn't learn a thing, did he? Such arrogance irritated Leland as he turned to greet the older man. His handsome face looked as cold as ever. Underscore 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 happy Thanksgiving. Hope you enjoy the mass release. Happy face. Chapter 55 Conversation with the Clan Elder You are listening at NovelFull.audio What brings you to my quarters, Clan Elder? Do not tell me that I was only gone for a day but the entire pack is in disarray under your orders. Contrary to your expectations, we have fulfilled our responsibility and done our part for the pack. We shall arrive in Hastings in about a week's journey and that is where Duke Romanov makes his appearance. Leland fell silent as he did believe in his pack's resourcefulness, but even then he showed only modest interest. What of the Baron from Hastings? What has become of his fate when you traveled there? A smile formed on the elder's lips and Leland detected a scent in the older man, he was still bathed in the odor of human blood. Naturally, we obtained the ownership of the castle and even killed his companion. Leland's expression only rose at that and his lips curled into a tiny smile. Duke Ferdinand is related to the Queen of the Kingdom, isn't that, right? I am satisfied that we are coming closer to our goals in extinguishing them all. Yes, he is one of the many relatives of the Queen scattered across the kingdom, the clan elder informed him. He was returning from the capital but our men intercepted him along with his young relative. Even without Leland's presence, the clan elder truly decided to push on with the mission irrespective of his presence. Normally, the Alpha would have problems with such a thing, but in a way, Leland gave permission and nothing bad happened. At least nothing terrible happened to the Lycans compared to the humans. Leland would look over this just once since it was a successful mission. Instead, there was something else on his mind that filled him with a sense of purpose. The real reason why he was here in the human kingdom and the very enemies of the Lycan pack all centered on a very specific group of individuals. The royal family. Is there any chance that this young man assassinated is the crown prince himself? Surely there is a certain amount of news about the young prince wandering from one relative to another, isn't there? Leland tapped a finger idly on the balcony. What are the chances? That is right, Alpha. Unfortunately, it was not the direct descendant of the king that joined the duke to his death. The young man was probably a nephew of a lesser house although I think the bodies are too mutilated to actually tell which is which. The clan elder narrowed his gaze at Leland's finger and the insistent tapping the alpha was doing, but he held back from speaking. Dot, then it seems that we must slowly make our way to the capital of the kingdom after we controlled Hastings, Leland said as he glanced downwards at their hill. Right below the mansion was a village that feared this place for hosting a wicked witch. Their fear was not really baseless because Leland did borrow this mansion from an old friend, a real witch who had been supporting his cause for a long time. However, those dumb humans didn't know that they should fear werewolves more than they feared witches. You see, most witches he knew didn't like blood. 
werewolves did. Perhaps, they thought, after the last war, the werewolf tribes had greatly reduced because their king hunted and killed many of such monsters. Well, they were in for a surprise. All this time, the werewolf's tribe lay low, but they were not defeated nor gone. They were actually exerting power and got ready for the next big war, where they would get their revenge. Leland's pack was the largest on their continent because they had been working so hard to gather the several Lekan packs across the entire continent who found themselves traveling and nomadic. Right now, humans settled in their lands. However, it was only a matter of time before everything changed. Soon enough, Leland knew that these people would understand what true fear was like and it was not in witches, ghouls, or spooky ghosts that haunted forests or so they believed. These people will soon realize what it was like to be treated as nothing more than lesser individuals. Yes, Alpha. The older man bowed lowly at him. You may leave, Leland grunted and he heard the clan elder's sharp intake of air. The old Lekan was probably shocked and infuriated at his attitude, but he did not care for any whispers, deceits, and lies. Before I do leave, my highly esteemed Alpha, I wish to give my advice as an elder within this pack, the older man said and found the Alpha silent. Leland ignored him and simply awaited this older Lekan to depart from his chambers. The advice often given to him was always wrong, or rather, it shared the power of an Alpha amongst the elders and Leland refused to do so. The clan elder didn't wait for any moment and simply narrowed his gaze. The rest of the pack will be livid to hear that you visited Blackwoods. Especially your dear mother, he said. Silence overtook the balcony and it was something that the elder soon regretted. His gaze focused on Leland's fingernails lengthening as fur covered his entire hand. It was a miracle to have someone like Leland do a partial transformation. This allowed him to retain sharpness of mind and more acumen in most things. One of them turned out to be talking back against his elders. Is that a threat? Leland asked coldly. Even without facing the older man, Leland's aura was powerful enough that it made the man swallow his words and hesitate. He was supposed to have the upper hand, but Leland's sheer power made him uneasy. No, Alpha. It is simply a reminder of the sins of those people, the clan elder said. The betrayal that she did is not worth reminiscing about at all and is not looked on too kindly. Shut your mouth if you wish to retain your tongue, Leland narrowed his eyes dangerously at the man. The elder shrank because he could feel a murderous aura engulf their Alpha. He had witnessed Leland looking like this right before he killed one of the elders last year who dared talk back to him. As the Alpha, it is my decision that will rule in this matter, Leland said. You are dismissed. Without another word, the clan elder left. Chapter 56 Nicholas has to leave you are listening at novelfull.audio. Leland clutched the balcony's railing and crushed the stone underneath his touch. Even the mere pressure in his palms showcased his strength while the man himself didn't look like he was exerting power. His expression was as calm as ever. How strong he actually was. No one really knew. He never lost a fight and those who dared challenge him were now all dead. The others didn't wish to find out just how strong he was because they might only get the answer on the way to their graves. The Alpha looked down on the railing and muttered to himself. Even these old wolves still know how to bark. It was true that Leland hated these humans who were all living good and decent lives in their kingdom, unaware of the sacrifices and the blood of the lichens that spilled in the very land that they claimed theirs. However, Sophie was the only exception. Perhaps Jack Hansley too. Except that the man had died so it was only Sophie who showed him the good that was in humanity. Leland was aware that there were good humans but as the alpha of the largest and most powerful across the entire continent, their lives were not his concern at all. He only cared about his tribesmen. If those humans lived and kept their heads low, then the Lycans would accept their submission and use the lives of these humans according to their whim. However, if there was any blood that needed to run into the ground, the entire bloodline of the royal family will perish during this reign of Leland. Leland will make sure of it. Unknown to the Alpha, 
he had unknowingly let one of the royal family members go when he decided to let Sophie's husband live. Meanwhile, Sophie and Nicholas finally found accommodation in the town center of Hauntingen. Sophie looked around the beautiful room inside of the inn and realized that her husband was really living a simple life by staying with her. This place was really luxurious and everything looked expensive. She could imagine Nicholas must be used to the finer things in life. Now, when she remembered how modest her hut was, she suddenly felt embarrassed. She bit down on her lip once she saw him place her things down. Nick, she asked once she saw him approach her. I need to head back into the forest, Sophie, Nicholas told her sweetly and gently kissed her forehead. Please stay here until I return safely and ensure that the Blackwoods forest is safe from intruders. No. That's insane. Sophie exclaimed as she grabbed her husband's shoulders. What are you going to do? Throw yourself as bait. Do you have a death wish? Both of them saw the trunk broken into two and Sophie was frightened that she'd come across news that her husband was murdered in the forest. She grabbed both of his hands and held it tightly. Please stay with me here, Nick. Sophie bit her lip. Her eyes looked at him pleadingly. I don't mind staying here at all in the inn, but I want you to be beside me throughout this time. We can inform the village elder about what happened and maybe they can send a hunting party for that. Let them do the search. You shouldn't do it alone. Do you think that these people will move? I think they will more likely refuse even if ordered, Nicholas said. It's dangerous to go out there and your people hesitate in even stepping into the Blackwoods forest. You managed to convince them to come to our wedding. So, maybe they will go if you ask them, Sophie pointed out and it made Nicholas grimace. That was true, but even that was something different. I have money on my side at that time, but I doubt some people will throw their lives away for money, and even if they do, I don't want to risk anybody else, Nicholas said. It is up to me to take care of this. So you'll put yourself in danger. What about me? Sophie's eyes welled with tears and she averted her gaze. I'll be more than careful, Nicholas raised a hand and gave her a grin. I was also trained properly as a boy and am familiar with combat. Noble training if you understand. Some of us will lead armies in the future so we are also good at this. He cleared his throat and, even though he really hated it, Nicholas decided to mention his condition so Sophie would feel more reassured. I'm also a leacon. Nicholas said flatly. I have greater strength than most humans, and I can move faster. If I met any dangerous animals or even other lichens, I can protect myself. That's why I prefer to go alone, so I can move around more easily. Do you understand, honey? I. I think so. Sophie wished that she could do something more and yet she knew that she'd just end up burdening Nick to look after her rather than himself. Nicholas really wanted to reassure her that he would be okay, but he also didn't want to let her know that he intended to take Wolfsbane again because even that hurt Sophie. As the crown prince, it was his duty to conform to the palace's rules and laws. Right now, his father, the king, would kill any leacon on sight and Nicholas had a feeling that he wouldn't be an exception to the rule at all. So once he got rid of the problem, both the leacon and the curse, he'd whisk Sophie back into the palace. That's good. When I come back, I have something important to tell you, okay? Nicholas looked at his wife deeply. He really hated this situation where he had to leave the woman he loved to get rid of the curse from himself. However, he had no other choice. His time was running out. His father would start feeling worried and send a search army to find him if he didn't fix his problem soon and return to the palace. Underscore 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 from Miss Reality Bites. Yay! I am so happy that the book has gone premium. I will publish 2.3 chapters per day starting December. And if we reach certain targets, I will throw in mass releases. I hope you are happy with the 12. chapter mass release yesterday. Happy face, by the way, this story only has 9 reviews so far.
would you be so kind as to write a review for this book? I only ask now because I think after 50 seconds chapters, you can already have a sense of how the story is like. So, you can let me, and other potential readers, know why they should or shouldn't read this book. Much love, Vina. Chapter 57 Nicholas is heading to the forest you are listening at novelfull.audio. Note. OMG. I was rendered speechless today. Thank you so much, Maud, for gifting a spacecraft to Nick and Sophie, crying face. Hope you are having a wonderful weekend. Underscore 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 I don't want you to get hurt, so please come back soon. Sophie looked him in the eye. Don't force yourself, okay? If you think that you'll get hurt, there's nothing wrong with running away. Promise me you will prioritize your safety for me. Please, Nick. I won't endanger myself because I know that someone is right here waiting for me. Nicholas raised her hand and gave it a soft kiss. His eyes were filled with so much love for her and his voice sounded so firm and confident when he spoke. I will be back, Sophie. Nicholas found it incredibly hard to leave Sophie. He remembered his promise, but how could they live in peace if there was a leakin on the loose and was probably on the hunt? It was up to him to take care of it. He must make sure Blackwood's forest would be safe for his wife before he could even let her step back into it. Perhaps that was why Nicholas still had his lycanthropy despite consuming some wolfsbane. Only another lycan can successfully kill another one without injuring himself. Or even if he injured himself, his body would regenerate quickly. That was an advantage that he would use right now. Instead of cursing himself for still being a lycan, for once, Nicholas was relieved that he was, or else he might have needed to bring soldiers here. He didn't want them trampling on life, and he was also not ready for Sophie to find out his identity before he could get rid of this curse. I love you, he kissed Sophie deeply and closed his eyes as if imprinting her scent and her face on his heart. When he opened his eyes, Sophie looked away, hiding her tears so Nicholas wouldn't see them. Please come back for me. She whispered hoarsely. I promise, sweetheart, Nicholas wanted to cry too, but he held back his emotions. You are my reason to live. I will come back for you as soon as possible. He turned around and left the chamber in long steps. He knew he had to go immediately. Otherwise, he would become weak and wanted to stay behind so he could be with Sophie. No, he was trained to put the crown's interest above his. And now, it was his duty to rid himself of this lycanthropy so he could be a good king. After Nicholas left, Sophie dropped to her knees and cried despondently on the floor. When Nicholas returned to their hut in the Blackwoods forest, except for the tree still lying on the ground, there was no more scent of that lichen. His gaze narrowed imperceptibly as he approached the tree. Nicholas was about to give it a punch to see how strong he was compared to the one who brought it down but then decided against it. Instead, he used his entire strength to roll the tree further down away from the hut. He knew this could possibly be made into firewood. He wouldn't have to do this when they were in the palace now, but he secretly enjoyed his and Sophie's activities so much together. While he'd become extremely busy once he became king, he was looking forward to seeing Sophie after the day was over. He couldn't wait to bring her to the capital to introduce her to his parents and announce their marriage. They wouldn't be able to reject Sophie because they were already married. Especially because Nicholas and Sophie had consummated their marriage. They had done the deed several times now. Wouldn't it be better if Sophie became pregnant? That would secure their relationship even more. The royal family wouldn't want to send away a royal baby even though the mother was a mere peasant. Thinking about Sophie pregnant with their child made a smile curve up on the prince's face. Gosh, he loved her so much. Nicholas shook his head and muttered, concentrate. He needed to be extremely alert even though the scent of the other lichen no longer appeared in the air. Nicholas glanced around and even used his other senses to track but he didn't find anything else. Has it already gone far? 
Nicholas asked himself warily and took another step deeper into the forest. He was extremely guarded as his gaze darted around as if waiting for the creature from his nightmare to emerge. Unlike before, when he was a boy, Nicholas now had a reason to fight for and he wasn't going to back down at all. So it was his disappointment and also wariness when he discovered that he couldn't even hear or sense another lichen in the forest. If the lichen left, then it meant that it must have either returned to its pack or continued moving forward. Perhaps both. Nobody knew where all the lichen packs were hiding or whether they were blending with regular humans. Nicholas knew that an incident like this that was certified by him brought more attention to the issue of the war between humans and lichens. I need to report this to the palace once I return, he muttered. He hoped it would help him prove himself to his father for once. However, Nicholas still needed to cure himself. So, he headed deeper into the forest to return to the Wolfsbane area. It was impossible to see so many Wolfsbane flowers, but the place that Nicholas arrived at was filled with it in abundance. Dot he wondered if magic was working here because Wolfsbane flowers shouldn't be growing this fast at all. There's no time for me to spend it on these thoughts, Nicholas muttered to himself as he pulled out gloves from his bag. He cut down a couple of branches from trees to create a fire and also pulled out a small cauldron from his holding bag. Without it, Nicholas might have returned home to actually cook there, but this time he was more than ready. Nicholas took out the almanac and looked at the suggested recommendations and separated the flower bulbs from the stems and leaves. These purple flowers were nauseous inducing for someone like him who could even just smell it. He held his breath as he prepared the potion for lycanthropy cure. Underscore 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 thank you so much for the wonderful reviews you wrote for this book. I am sorry, a few got flagged by the system and not showing on the app, I don't know why. The algorithm can be weird at times. But, please know I am very grateful you took the time to write them. XX. Chapter 58 Nicholas at the Viscount's Mansion You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Nicholas took a deep breath when he checked the Wolfsbane potion in the cauldron. This was made with double the ingredients they used the last time. So, he hoped he could finally see some results. It didn't take too much time and now that Nicholas was alone in the forest, he could do it all and scream as much as he needed. This time, the prince was determined to stay awake and not pass out. When that happened the last time with Sophie, Nicholas couldn't remember how long he was out and what followed his screaming, but he couldn't let his guard down. Nicholas repeated it to himself. Cure. Palace. Report. Introduction. Nicholas needed to cure himself of lycanthropy and then head to the palace with Sophie. He was going to report on the leak in sighting and then finally introduce Sophie as his wife and there was nothing that his family could do. He chanted it to himself a couple of times as the fire in the cauldron slowed down and finally died. The liquid was still burning hot and was more poisonous than he could ever imagine, but it didn't matter. Cure. Palace. Report. Introduction, Nicholas repeated those words to encourage himself. He really wished that Sophie was here to help him, but he'd rather not see her hurt to know that he would suffer again. Nicholas' suffering was also carried by Sophie. However, if there was a chance for Nick to lighten the burden, he would do it in a heartbeat. He would prefer to do this by himself and spare Sophie the ghastly sight of him fighting his demon out of his body and becoming human again. Nicholas' stomach pounded as he reached for the cauldron and parted his lips open. The liquid sloshed down his throat and just like before it was burning liquid literally tearing away his throat with an acid dot-like intensity. The cauldron immediately clanged into the ground and rolled over. Nicholas' grip weakening but this time, his throat was too scorched for screaming and instead he felt a wave of dizziness overcome him. Ah! He pressed his head to get rid of the dizziness. His mouth called out Sophie's name. He wished she was here but at the same time, he was glad she was not. He didn't want her to witness this. So. Sophie. 
In the field of his vision, Nicholas started to see dancing lights. Almost like spirits or tiny fairies. He wasn't sure if anything he was seeing was real, but then his own body swayed and tumbled. Nicholas found himself moving slowly and ever so dizzily as if he was actually aboard a ship and the waves were crashing against a boat. He rocked on his heels and nearly tipped over and yet he tried to chant or at least mouth what he had in mind. Cure. Palace. Report, the man tried so hard to exert his focus. I need. To. Go. Palace. Report. Sophie. Oh, water. Nicholas' voice was hoarse and also incredibly dry that he started looking for water. Anywhere. Water. He thought he heard the sound of water trickling and he pushed himself forwards towards the source. Everywhere around him were sparks of lights, the sound of what seemed to have been a leakin but then, finally, Nicholas reached the outskirts of the forest. However, it was far different from where he came from. He had walked in the opposite direction of Sophie's little hut. Nicholas tried to tug his body back and yet his body did not cooperate with him at all. He said it again. Cure. Palace, Nicholas kept moving, following where his body took him, not knowing where he was. He needed to find water, badly. Thud. He finally toppled over and slumped as he hit his shin against a rock and then fell over into the grass. He tried to raise his head a little and thought he saw a white mansion. Was that his family's palace or someone else's? Was that a figment of his imagination and was even this actually real? Nicholas' eyes were half dot lidded and were falling heavily before he could even force himself to stand. Everything was so heavy right now. When he first drank the wolfsbane potion, it was as if his entire blood was getting cleaned and removing all the effects of lycanthropy. However, this time, it was so different. A glimmer of a figure came running towards him and he could hear the shout of a woman. She might have stupidly tried to ask him if he was okay and then suddenly called for servants. Nicholas didn't even know. Maybe he was actually facing a bear right now and his mind was pulling tricks on him. Nicholas' eyes were already closing even though he tried to keep them open. Sophie. So, he never finished his sentence. The crown prince passed out and was quickly carried over by the servants into the viscount's house, there was a young woman around his age who walked worriedly, following the servants. There was a pale look on the lady's face as she kept up with the pace. Nicholas was brought into one of the rooms and the servants were quickly moving according to the wishes of their lady. He's burning hot with a fever, please do something, the lady shouted at her servants but then suddenly looked around. Someone call for a physician. Hurry, that there were a lot of things that could go wrong and the viscount who just arrived from a trip from the capital saw that the entire house was in a mess. He stormed up to meet his daughter but then he stopped cold. He couldn't believe his eyes when he saw the person inside the room. It was Prince Nicholas Hannenberg, the crown prince of Riga. The crown prince was lying on their bed, his face as white as a sheet and barely a color to his lips. There was already a physician who was counting his heartbeat and trying to help. His heartbeat is erratic, we need something to slow it back down to normal. Oh, Lord. The Viscount's eyes bulged. He immediately recognized their crown prince. Hearing the physician's voice, the Viscount was moved from his reverie and he immediately shouted. Make sure the crown prince lives or our deaths will soon follow. Underscore 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 please, don't throw tomatoes at me. Nick chose to get his cure alone, and now things didn't happen according to plan. Chapter 59 The King and Queen Come to Visit You are listening at novelfull.audio. A message was sent to the royal palace that day with the swiftest hawks to carry the letter. The Viscount informed the king and queen that the crown prince was injured and currently staying with them. At first, it seemed to be impossible because the queen knew that her son, Prince Nicholas, was finding his cure or searching for the young girl who saved him, but then the woman realized that the Viscount's manor was located near Hauntingen. 
It meant that it was possible. She suddenly felt so worried that something might have happened to Nicholas. The queen then convinced her husband to go with her to pick their son up. When Nicholas was younger and kidnapped by the werewolf's tribe, the king himself was worried. He sent search parties everywhere. He was so distraught when Nicholas went missing for over one month. When the boy suddenly returned, alive, the king was one of the first who was overjoyed. However, over the years, their relationship soured up and it was difficult because the king had high expectations of their son. Nicholas cannot even take care of himself at this age. The king scowled. What was he doing that he still needed getting saved by strangers? According to this letter, our son has been poisoned, your majesty. I will go pick him up and meet the one who saved Nicholas, the queen told her husband who was still in bed. There was a pointed look in her eyes that made the king rise up. Fine. Let us see who has saved him this time, the king spoke. It is right that we reward those who have saved the crown prince and future king of this kingdom. The king and queen traveled for about three weeks to reach the Viscount's manor nearby haunting inn and were quickly greeted by all of the staff and its people. However, both the king and queen were only searching for one person and that was their son. The Viscount bowed low and thanked His Majesty and Her Majesty for their prompt arrival. Before the two could question what happened, the Viscount already launched into a story. My daughter, Lady Karenina, is an adventurous spirit who likes leaving our house despite my orders, Viscount Verhoeven said. But it is how she discovered the Crown Prince just outside of Blackwood's forest and quickly brought him in. Through her quick dot wittedness, she was able to help bring the crown prince's fever down. The king and queen shared some looks, but then thanked the viscount for his tale and asked for their son. They were led upstairs and into one of the rooms in the manor. Compared to the royal palace, it was much simpler. A servant who was standing guard outside the room bowed so deeply to the monarchs and then opened the door for them. As soon as the king and queen stepped inside, they found Nicholas in bed. There was a young woman across from him. It was a lady who was holding up a spoon and clumsily carrying a bowl in her hands. She wasn't used to working but wanting to become closer with the prince by feeding him the soup so he could recover his strength. So, she had been staying around Nicholas since day one and served him medicine or food whenever she could. Open your mouth, your highness, and I will serve you. Be careful. It's quite hot. Nicholas frowned and sighed inwardly. He knew that he shouldn't be rude to the lady who saved his life, but he still liked doing things on his own and didn't want to be treated like a child. He also didn't like how she kept getting into his personal space. However, he didn't want to be an ungrateful person. So, he threw her a fake smile. I can do it by myself, Lady Karenina. Before Lady Karenina could argue with him and insist that she fed him, the queen and king already entered the room. Viscount Verhoeven was following along and throwing looks at his daughter. Nick. The queen called out to Nicholas and quickly rushed to his side. She gave him a tight hug and then smiled at the young lady. Her voice was hoarse when she expressed her gratitude. Thank you for saving my son's life. It is my great honor. Your Majesty, Karenina said and inclined her head lowly before sweeping into a full curtsy. Anyone would have done the same. You are a kind young lady with good manners, the Queen gushed but then she glanced at Nicholas. She placed a hand on his forehead and whispered into his ear. Did you find what you were looking for? Nicholas blinked and stared unsurely at her. What? The Queen's eyes widened but then she reached for Nicholas' face. She whispered underneath her breath so the king wouldn't hear. My son, do you know who I am and who you are? You are, my mother. Nicholas frowned at her and was a bit amused at this feeling of closeness. And I am the crown prince of this kingdom. Then, the reason why you went to haunting him is. His mother cleared her throat. Do you know why you came here in the first place, Nick? For who, or? What you were searching for? I don't know. I am sorry, mother. Nicholas' eyes widened and he clenched his hands together. 
he tried to grab something in the back of his head. He knew it was so important, so vital, but then he couldn't reach for it. It was at the tip of his tongue but it was oh so foreign. That's all right, the queen noticed the beginning of Nicholas' panic attacks and started to calm him down to no avail. She feared that her son was about to transform. It already caught the attention of both the king, the viscount, and the young lady who saw him with his hands in his head. I really don't know. What happened to me? Did something happen? How did I end up here? Nicholas asked his mother. The queen could see that her son was panicking but all throughout that moment, there were no signs of him transforming at all. It was different from the last time. Did this mean? Nicholas succeeded in treating his lycanthropy. The queen was wondering. Was her son no longer a monster? Underscore 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 from Miss Reality Bites. I really hate how his parents always refer to his condition as a monster. No wonder Nicholas was so adamant to remove his lycanthropy and hated himself at times. BVEC. Chapter 60 Is Nicholas Really Cured and He Lost His Memories of Being a Lycan? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. The Queen's heart was in a mess. She bit her lip and looked at Nicholas carefully, trying to see any signs of him transforming, no matter how little. Still, there was none. Gosh, maybe he was really cured. He was finally cured, wasn't he? The queen felt her heart suddenly become so light. She took a deep breath. Tears pricked her eyes and she pulled Nicholas into a hug. Do not worry about it, son. I will explain it once we return home. Everything is okay now. Was the reason for her son's memory loss was because he was finally cured from lycanthropy. He shared with her that he would be looking for wolfsbane and used it to get rid of the lycanthropy in him. They knew the plant was poisonous and dangerous for werewolves. However, both steeled their hearts because they knew Nicholas had no other choice. He must return to his old self. Time was running out. They managed to hide his condition for eight years but it was only a matter of time until he was found out. The queen understood that Nicholas would do whatever it takes to free himself from this curse, or he would die trying. The queen was feeling so emotional. Nicholas still didn't show any signs of transforming. He just didn't remember why he was here and haunting him. If the reason for his memory loss was because he was cured, then the queen could accept it and actually move on from that moment. She would talk to him in private and try to probe what memory did he still retain. If Nicholas was really cured and he didn't remember ever being a leacon at one point in his life, then the queen would keep the secret within herself and carry it with her to her grave. Those were terrible memories in the first place and perhaps it was time for Nicholas to finally start a new chapter in his life where he was no longer chained to his past. The queen was sure that someday in the future, her son would thank her for this. Meanwhile, Sophie was not the type of person who sat down and did nothing. Even when she met Nicholas and he seemed like someone who could easily save her from her Aunt Helga's family, she did not beg him for it when they had met. Back when Aunt Helga refused to have her tutored, Sophie decided to study by herself and she was able to gain help from Catherine because the woman was impressed with her fighting spirit. If Sophie remembered herself as a child after she lost her parents, even if she lost hope in staying alive, she learned to pick herself up and learned how to become self-sufficient. Even with Nicholas as a young boy with her, she was the one who first stepped out to help him and not the other way around. After a month of living together, Nicholas eventually did leave her and Sophie knew that he had his reasons for it. The young Sophie was devastated back then but she still chose to remain strong. All of these events in her life had contributed greatly to how she grew up as a person. It made Sophie fiercely independent, resourceful but also long.suffering. She learned how to make the best out of everything. Maybe it was why she tolerated being with Aunt Helga's family. Sophie wanted to bid her time and graduate from Cotton Academy, 
but also because a part of her always had a small hope that maybe just maybe, there would be some good in their hearts. Of course, she came to learn that she was wrong. All of these circumstances shaped Sophie into who she was today. There were times that Sophie felt weak and helpless, but she never let it get through her head. She learned how to be strong because she needed to be strong. Sophie eventually learned and became the type of person who did not like waiting for another individual to come rescue her or to tell her to stay put at all. However, Nicholas was the only exception in her life now. L.C. When Nicholas brought her to the inn, there was a worried and frantic look on his face as he grabbed a hold of her shoulders and asked her to stay. The way he pleaded with her was so sincere that it was hard to say no. He wanted her to wait for him again and Sophie was sure that this time, the young man would keep his promises. The two of them were now adults who now knew the value of keeping their words. The two of them even vowed to each other. Sophie and Nicholas were now husband and wife. She loved him and he also loved her and that was something Sophie cherished far more than she might have let Nicholas know. You told me that you would come back, Nick. So, where are you? Sophie looked out the window and bit down on her lip. Every day, she waited for him like this and fervently waited to see her husband. Sophie didn't realize how much it made her happy to be with him and how much she missed him. For someone who learned how to be independent and tough, Nicholas was the light of her life. The man was someone who brought a bright ray of sunshine into her dark and even dreary life. Sophie never thought that it was possible for her to be happy again after everything that happened to her. A part of her sometimes even wondered if what everybody was whispering about the Blackwoods forest was true, except it wasn't the forest but Sophie who was cursed. Of course, Sophie knew it was ridiculous to think that way, but she still found herself doing just that every now and then. Sometimes when the night was a little cold, she lay down awake, staring at the ceiling, so it was for that very reason that Sophie was so happy to meet Nicholas again. She found it a joy to share her life with someone who knew and understood pain like her, the two of them were able to help each other become a little stronger together. And now he had gone for too long. She had waited for him for over two weeks and he still had not returned. Underscore 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 oh my god. Poor Sophie. She can never catch a break. Crying face.